In this video, I go from Yellowstone to Jackson. I can't say I went to everywhere in Yellowstone, but I would like to tell you what I really liked about, as well as things I didn't really like about. One thing I would like to say before I start is that the footage I am showing you in this video aren't really great. So my apology in advance. First, I highly recommend the Route 14 from Cody, Wyoming to get to the east entrance of Yellowstone. This route made me not just pumped up, but it made me feel like this was the main course if this was a dinner. It had a little bit of everything, like some of the Little Rock canyons and some of white, gray, or dark rock formations. When we finally entered Yellowstone through the east entrance, we were actually not that impressed compared to the Route 14 earlier. But the Yellowstone Lake was gigantic. It had a feel of the seven Great Lake of Michigan. I thought it might just as well be called an, an ocean because it seemed almost endless. And then we came across this bison in the wild and I've never seen one in person in the wild. We were so amazed with this encounter. When we visited the Yellowstone North entrance and Northeast entrance, were not opened to visit visitor vehicles because the flooding washed out the roads. So do check the status of these entrances before leaving. During our stay in Yellowstone, we almost did a full figure eight around the park. But first, I want to show you Hayden Valley. I really liked this one. This was in my top two because you see a beautiful valley like the ones you might see in a movie, like Jurassic Park 1, the first one. And you can see all these wild bisons in groups. It was as if the earth before humans existed. One thing I would like to tell you guys is that I like valleys, canyons, falls a lot more than geysers. Although Yellowstone is known for having the biggest active geysers and many other geysers. I liked other things during my stay here. The route I really enjoyed was from Canyon Va Village to Tower Roosevelt to Mammoth Hot Spring out of the whole uh, figure eight. The overlook at the Dunn Raven Pass was amazing as well. If I could use three words to des describe it, it would be vast, openness, stillness. I don't know if this is Upper Falls or Lower Falls, but I liked here a lot. If you don't have time to see everything, you can skip the Tower Fall. But if you have time, just hit every spot on the map because you are here anyways. Mammoth Hot Spring itself wasn't like super interesting, but the little town formed around this area was pretty cool to drive by. We stayed one night in Yellowstone, West Yellowstone, and we liked it for these reasons. First, the lights at night. The lights at night were pretty. Two, it was the closest town to Yellowstone. Three, they were, I mean, they have a wildlife sanctuary where you can see huge bears and wolves and more. During my stay in Yellowstone, I really wanted to see what the bears in this particular area look like. And here was the only place to do that. I highly recommend visiting this sanctuary but I still wanted to see bears and wolves in the wild while I was driving inside Yellowstone Park. And most of the time, when you see a group of cars in front of you slowing down or completely stopped, it's usually for a bison or a group of bisons. 
But to my surprise, this time it was a wolf. It wasn't huge like the ones we saw at the sanctuary, but still, I thought my dream came true, low key. Oh, I forgot to mention this, but make sure make sure you bring a tele lens or binoculars to view things. Of all the places that you've thought about bringing binoculars, this place is it. Oh, about the things I didn't like as much, the grand prismatic spring. Didn't really look like the images on Google. I couldn't see the drastic color difference, differences going from the reddish orange color to the deep blue color. The kind of gazers I actually liked more just had one single color, just blue. It may have gotten a little lighter or darker, but the color was always bluish. Another place we didn't like as much was the old faithful gazer. Maybe because we didn't see the gazer erupting in front of our eyes. After that, we exited Yellowstone through the south entrance and we were headed to Jackson. And it couldn't have been any more perfect timing wise. We were able to see this beautiful sunset over the Teton mountain range. That felt like a great official ending to our Yellowstone trip. When we arrived Jackson at night, it was very, very impressive as well. It, I was more impressed than the night at the town of West Yellowstone. So many pretty lights and a lot of bars and entertainment venues. It made me wonder what would have been like to arrive Jackson at night in the old cowboy days. It was very obvious that tourism has been booming in this town for a long time. The next day, Jackson was all shine and glory. I would say a town that is similar in feel is Bar Harbor in Maine. For food, I would pick Bar Harbor, but for, so far, for tourism, Jackson is the coolest Midwestern city that I have visited. And that's just based on how the city looks and not taking activities like skiing or camping into consideration. Thanks for listening to my journey between Yellowstone and Jackson.